This was brought to you by Franklin County Internet Gaming Society on YouTube and Facebook. The materialist insists on facts, on history, on the force of circumstances, and the animal wants of man. The idealist on the power of God and will, on inspiration, on miracle, Ralph Waldo Emerson, the transcendentalist. Magic is something everybody dreams of but nobody seems to possess. The power to conjure something from nothing. To change a man into a toad, to curse one's enemy in their progeny, call down lightning from the sky and lay waste to a city, all powers claimed by wizards in myth, legend, and epic fantasy tales. We are drawn to these tales, however, not just because of the power displayed in them. Wizards present a different kind of allure, the desire for power tempered with wisdom. Demons and monsters have powers, but great limitations and curses too. Mages have the power of knowing when and how to use power. While this can be a limitation, it is a self-imposed one, betokening a discipline rare in this world. Mage. The Awakening is a game about these kinds of mages and the trials and temptations they face on the path of discipline and enlightenment. The allure of power constantly threatens to draw them from the path away from wisdom. The mage is someone who has awakened, whose soul has been freed of an ancient curse afflicting mortals. Most people's souls are asleep, unaware of the raw power they can tap to remake their world. The truth has been hidden from them many lifetimes ago. All they know is a lie. Mages can see through the lie and enact humanity's birthright magic. A modern sorcery world. Mages live in the here and now, in this world, just down the street. Although their society resembles more the feudal states of the past, broken into balkanized regions that remain largely incommunicado with one another, they still travel and use cell phones and the internet like most modern people. But they live in a world of secrets, where the hoarding of secrets is a form of currency. Disagreements between mentor and student, master and adept, turn into rifts as a Apprentices accuse masters of withholding necessary knowledge, and masters declare most apprentices unworthy of it. When a mage can no longer work with his mentor, he leaves and seeks his own sanctum and cabal. A group of mages to whom he can trust his own secrets. Or so the theory goes in practice. The balls can be contentious, backbiting groups, fighting over the same old thing, the ownership of secrets. Mages travel from their sanctums only when necessary to seek magical power or new mysteries, or to forge the occasional, often temporary, alliance with another mage who has something they need. The entirety of the spiritual realm may be open for their exploration. The mages usually see little of our world beyond their own chosen ground. Humanity at large is ignorant of this occult underground. Sorcerers and witches live down the street and sometimes shop 
at the same stores. But the public is ignorant of this amazing truth. Even if the existence of mages became known, most people wouldn't believe it. And those who did would see it as cause for alarm and fear rather than wander and awe. Magic is afoot in the world, but most people resist it. High magic. Mages presents a vision of magic somewhat different from that portrayed in most occult literature. Although it incorporates many famous occult elements, Mage Perkins to stories of high magic, mythic tales of wizardly might and awesome hubris, but set in the here and now, not in some distant ne neverland. Instead of assuming a character is a practitioner of a known magical practice, such as voodoo, Kabbalism, Hermetic Hermeticism, Taoism, Exorcism, or any number of other forms. Mage posits a mortal performs magic by connecting this invisible world. All the magical practices mentioned above hint at or in some way speak to the existence of this higher realm, but none of them fully prepares a magician to encounter it. For that, he must walk down paths of sheer mystery, entering a reality unknown to mundane occult traditions, but one that completes and realizes their fragmentary knowledge. Characters in Mage are not the stereotypical solitary old men and women living in distant towers that most people think of. Characters in this setting form into cabals, groups of mages who recognize the need to work together, for few of the awakened can master all the mysteries of the arcana. A group can pull its magical resources and lure to achieve what one mage working alone would need decades to accomplish. But working together isn't easy. Each mage tends to have his own idea of how things should work. Mages are used to getting their own way with reality and find it difficult to adjust to the expectations of others. The result is often a contentious existence in which everyone jealously hides the fruits of their labor and research from one another until it becomes absolutely necessary to rebuild them. There's good reason for this paranoia though, since mages have discovered many times to their past regret that secrets must be earned, not given away freely. Learning magic requires one to solve riddles and answers, inscrutable questions. In the world of darkness, knowledge really is power. The age-old dream of power, while a rare few mages might spend their days contemplating their navels and the awesome secrets of the universe. Most mages are in the thick of things, always at ground zero for the next great momentous event. They don't just think, they act. By casting magic, mages are among the secret movers and shakers of the world. They're actions affect the tenure of reality itself for good or ill and yet they act unseen their powers invisible
to sleepers, ordinary people who are shrouded in their curse, blind to the truth. Worse, if a sleeper does get a glimpse of the truth, it taints the mage's spellcasting, increasing the likelihood that something terrible will go wrong, that a paradox will occur, altering reality in ways the mage never intended. Magic is not the goal, but the means. The goal is to attain the supernal world, the higher reality that is the source of magic, so that the limitations of the fallen world, this world, never again play a mage. The small-mindedness of mortals, however, extends even to the enlightened. Many mages think they're in competition with one another, as if there are only so many tickets to the heavens waiting to be claimed. A select few are open-minded enough to realize that only if ma mages tackle their hurdles in multiple fronts does any individual stand a chance of ascending. Mages fight over their own destinies. They do this not on some cosmic chessboard, but on the streets they call home. Journey to the shadow realm, the domain of spirits separated from the material world by an invisible barrier can provide insight and power and glimpses of the true enemies of the awakening. But these tools must be brought back home to be of any use. There are a number of degrees of threat, from neighboring mages to the legendary exarches in their cosmic places. Legendary mages who are said to control reality and seek to prevent the awakening that rose that roused sleepers. Persistent rivals of all mages are the se seers of the throne, mages from a mystical order that seeks control of the world in the name of the Exarch Arcs. Exarchs. The seers do not own or run the government, but their agents are certainly influential in the bureaucratic offices, speeding up or slowing down the engines of governance. Beyond the seers are the exarchs, wizards who, according to ancient myth, ascended to the supernal world and wrote their own exclusive and selfish visions into the tapestry, the whole of reality, and who still rule beyond the sight, direct knowledge and reach of mere mortals, including the, the awakening. These secret masters in dread Archons are said to manipulate events in ways unseen by even the awakened. Only the truly wise can discern their shadowy hands behind events and so work to thwart them. All is not completely lost to these shadowy forces, though. For the oracles are said to work against the exarchs on the same cosmic level. Like the exarchs, these mages ascended, but instead of lording it over pre creation, they wage guerrilla war against the false rulers, hoping for a day when enough mortal awaken to turn the tide and win the fight. Not all mages believe in the existence of the exarchs and oracles, but the legend of these mighty mages rise and 
usurpation of the tapestry motivates many of their own quests for power. Fame. Power corrupts. There's danger in magic. Reweaving the tapestry of creation can inflate the ego and swallow a mage in hubris. As he gains more power, control over reality through the casting of spells of increasing control and complexity, he risks losing touch with his own mortal nature, forgetting the limits of his mind, body, and soul. Some mages grow callous, caring little if their magic has unintended consequences on innocent bystanders. Others see no reason to curtail their mighty wills and use spells for even the most banal in mundane tasks that the wise claim should be performed with, without recourse to supernal power. The abyss that separates the world we know from the higher world is said to grow larger with every misuse of magic. Each time a mage invokes a paradox through faulty spellcasting, the world the worlds grow farther apart, and fewer and fewer souls awaken. On mystical order, one mystical order, the guardians of the bell, policies, polices, mage, society, punishing those deemed to have broken the laws of silence and secrecy, damaging the very universe with egotistic practices. Balancing power with wisdom is not easy, as can be imagined for anyone with the might to make his wishes come true beyond the alleged metaphysical consequences or misuse of power. There is the more prosaic everyone hates the jerk. This was brought to you by Franklin County Internet Gaming Society on YouTube and Facebook, Roger Hansen on Patreon, and Gaming with Infamous on Discord. Thanks for stopping by. Listen to our podcast on any of these platforms. Anchor. Breaker. Overcast. Pocket Casts. Radio Public. Spotify. Support us on Patreon. And check us out on Discord. All the links can be found in the video description below. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.